Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Wednesday and I hope that many of you are listening to me in the morning, at the start of your day, because it's very important to prepare yourself right from the beginning. The goal of this broadcast is to teach God's children that we need to prepare ourselves spiritually every single day. I don't need to tell you how to prepare your bodies because I know each one of you gets ready physically every morning. You put on your clothes and get yourself physically prepared just like any other day. But this broadcast is here to help you prepare spiritually every morning because that's crucial. There are so many people who leave their homes without any spiritual preparation. They head out with without talking to God, without praying. But you should always prepare yourself. You should ask yourself why you woke up this morning. You need to understand that God has granted you a brand new day. In Matthew 5 verse 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I hope you grasp the importance of these words. It's not just Christians who should see your good works. Even unbelievers should witness your good works so they can glorify your God who is in heaven. It's clear that the people Jesus is referring to in this passage are primarily unbelievers. That's why he said, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The children of God are those who have been born again. When you're born again, you become a child of God. You are a child of God, but there are others who haven't yet received the privilege of becoming children of God. They have been created by God, but they're not yet children of God because they haven't been born again, they haven't believed yet. So, you need to be a light to those who haven't yet encountered God so they can see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This is very important. God wants even those who don't know Him yet to be able to glorify and honor Him once they know notice the good works you do. It's those good works that you're called to do today. I'm talking to those of you who are already awake this morning. I want you to know that there are good works you should do today. No matter where you find yourself, even if you don't have a job, even if you're retired, there are good works that you should do. You might tell me that you're not exactly sure what to do, but let me tell you, anything you do for the good of others is a good deed. If you send the Kanguka broadcast to someone so they can hear the word of God, that's also a good deed. Making a phone call to encourage and uplift someone who is desperate, that's also a good deed. It's great to help people and it doesn't always have to be financial assistance. Even a simple word of encouragement or praying for someone is a good thing. We should always be ready to do good deeds every day. I'd like every person listening to me in the morning to ask themselves the following question, what good deed can I do today? You should ask yourself this question every morning before leaving your house. You already know your schedule, you know you're going to work or school, but you should also ask yourself what you can do today that could be a blessing to others or honor God. I want to tell you that there are good deeds you can do that aren't necessarily of a spiritual nature. Any good thing you do for others with love honors God. A good deed is any deed you do with love. It's true that you can do good things through your work because you're paid money, but you can also do other good deeds like assisting someone going through tough times, encouraging someone, or helping someone in need. Every day, you should ask yourself if there's a good deed you can do, if there's someone you can bless or encourage. These are the kind of questions I want us to ask ourselves every morning. Many children of God don't do good deeds because they don't take the time to think about it. But if every morning you seek to find good deeds that honor God that you can do throughout the day, you'll surely find something to do. It will depend on where you are, your resources, or your plans. But I want every person listening to me to know that there is something you can do that can honor God. Uplifting someone is a good deed. Praying for someone is a good deed. Anything you do with love brings glory to God. When you prepare your day in the morning, don't just think about praying for the destruction of the devil's plans. You should also think about doing something that will honor God. There's something you can do at work or school in such a way that those who see you will glorify God. We're now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the book of 1 Kings. We're still in chapter 9 since Monday. I've spent a lot of time on this chapter because I want all the listeners to know that there's always a condition that must be met before the fulfillment of God's promises. There are a bunch of teachings out there that are all about confession and faith, but these are false teachings because they don't show you that there's actually something you have to do. We need to understand that God has already accomplished everything. Everything we're expecting from Him, He's already done it. God has already finished everything He's prepared for you. Ephesians 2 verse 10 tells us that God has prepared good works for us a long time ago. It's already done. Our role is to practice what God has already prepared a long time ago. 
Faith is practicing what God has already set up. God has already given us promises. He's got promises for each and every person listening to me. As a believer, God has promises that apply to you. He knows your future, and your future is in His hands. I want you to know that God's got nothing but beautiful promises for you. But if you want these beautiful promises to come true in your life, you have to obey God's word and you must walk in righteousness. When you walk in righteousness and humility, and you obey God, His promises will be fulfilled in your life. That's why in chapter 9, God reveals to Solomon the beautiful promises He's gonna fulfill for him and his family. God will give him a lineage that will succeed him, and he'll bless his household. But in 1 Kings 9 verse 6, God said that if they turn away from him, if they serve other gods, and they bow down to them, then curses will come upon them. Israel will be wiped out if they stray from God. That's why I showed you yesterday in Exodus 28 that there are blessings available to us, but we have to obey first before we can enjoy those blessings. Those who love teachings about prosperity and blessings should tell people that there's a condition to fulfill before they can receive those blessings. It's not just about confessing. The most important thing is obedience. It's obedience that will allow you to see God's promises come to pass in your life. Obedience will open the door for you to receive divine blessings. Many people love blessings, but they don't like obedience. But you need to learn to obey, because without obedience, you're not going to see God's promises come to fruition in your life. I had asked you to read the following chapters up to chapter 16 because there are certain parts that I'll go through quickly, and it's easier to grasp the teachings if you've already read ahead. Now let's move to chapter 10. 1 Kings 10. From verse 1 to verse 7, we learn about the Queen of Sheba. The kingdom of Sheba covered present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea. This queen had heard about Solomon's wisdom, and she thought she had to go meet this man whom God had blessed with such great intelligence. God had given Solomon extraordinary wisdom to the point where everyone was talking about it. It's kinda like in the 50s when everyone was talking about the intelligence of the Jewish scientist called Einstein because he was the smartest guy of his time. So, everyone was talking about Solomon because God had granted him extraordinary ordinary intelligence. Remember, in chapter 3, we saw that God promised to make him the smartest man of all time. And to this day, there has never been anyone as intelligent as Solomon. So, the Queen of Sheba wanted to see with her own eyes this man everyone was talking about. But she also wanted to test him. In verse 1, it says she wanted to test him with riddles. She wanted to put Solomon to the test to see if he was really as intelligent as people claimed. She went on this long journey from Ethiopia just to test Solomon. From verse 1 to 7, we can see that the Queen of Sheba came with a huge entourage. When she arrived, she asked Solomon several tricky questions, but Solomon answered all of them. The Queen of Sheba was amazed, and she confessed to Solomon that she had doubted all the stories she had heard before coming, but now she knew they were true. She acknowledged that Solomon's wisdom and prosperity exceeded even what she had heard about him. She then presented Solomon with various treasures she had brought. Solomon was incredibly wealthy because many people came to admire his wisdom and they brought him gold and many other riches. In verse 24, we see that everyone wanted to see Solomon, and all these people brought him gifts. We'll continue this study tomorrow. May I am bless you, and have a great day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.